Welcome to High Tech with Grumpo, a show where I get high and talk about tech. And today I'm actually going to be talking about tech. I know, it's an insane thought. I'm trying to wrap my head around it still. The title of this video is probably offensive, and I'm sorry if you felt offended, but Oh, let's just hear me out a little. Maybe stay till the end, see what happens. Now, I promised a video on how cryptocurrency works, and that's probably going to have to be a series if you want something in depth. Here's just a little bit of a breakdown. But first, Grumpo, what are your credentials? You may wonder. Well, I'm a software engineer. I've been a software engineer for the better part of a decade. In the tech industry, I have friends in the fintech industry that I'm very close to, and I have friends who actually work in cryptocurrency and a former manager who works for Ethereum. I also have a math degree, so I understand the cryptography part, the mathy bits, if you will. I do not personally work in crypto, so you can take some of what I say with a grain of salt because I am not on the front line. But I know enough from working in the fraud and cybersecurity industry, again for the better part of a decade, to be able to give my take on this new form of currency and all of these new crypto pop-ups. Now you may have seen my video, you don't know what an IP address is. I was going to go much more in depth on this topic, but to be completely honest, my channel just doesn't have the growth or engagement to justify that kind of work, and I have a day job. So that's probably not gonna happen unless you like, subscribe, tell me that you want to, and that's not even like a ploy. <laughs> Genuinely, this is probably the best that you're gonna get for now. If you do wanna learn more about crypto, yeah, uh, like and subscribe, but also check out my other content because, um, spoiler alert, I'm a software engineer. It doesn't mean that I don't have other interests. I might post about an interesting hack one day, and then I might post about, I don't know, let's say a cover of Total Eclipse of the Heart for like 15 seconds the next day. You don't know. It's a weird channel. Welcome though. I'm a human being, jeez. <laughs> not a media company. If I do get enough engagement on my channel though, I will go much more in depth and break down every bit that I mention in this particular video, if that's something that you guys want to see. But also, I want to stay true to myself and, and do my bullshit too. So like, yeah. Anyways, let's get into the video. So if you couldn't tell, I have a lot of problems with cryptocurrency just based on the title and the thumbnail that I definitely haven't made yet, but you will have clicked on. And like any crypto person, I'm not a crypto person, but you know, like anybody discussing cryptocurrency, a big buzzword is blockchain. And I too am going to start my video with blockchain. <laughs> blockchain is a concept where you have essentially blocks of things and they build upon other blocks of things. There's something called a Merkle tree, which is used to verify this these chains of blocks of things and it's a compression-ish algorithm of sorts. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I can if you want me to. Comment down below if that's something that you would be interested in. And this concept first came around with our mothership of crypto, Bitcoin. Now there's a lot of lore around Bitcoin, a lot of mystery, and that adds to some fun marketing stuff. So I'm going to skip over that to not dazzle you with that. Instead, I'm going to tell you that blockchain is a concept and there are variations of it that are in place today that count as blockchain, but do very different things. Things. It has different applications. It has been applied to the healthcare industry. It is not just about crypto. And the blockchain can be implemented in various different ways. So to simplify this, we're only going to be limiting our scope to Bitcoin and Ethereum, which in my personal and professional opinion 
are the only legitimate forms of cryptocurrency anyways. And wait until the end, I'll tell you why, I promise. Now, talking about implementations of blockchain is extremely important because that has a lot to do with how cryptocurrency is mined. Now let's go back to Bitcoin, the original, okay? <laughs> now Bitcoin was created to be a completely distributed currency that was untraceable. Now let's remember these two elements, okay? Completely distributed and untraceable. By completely distributed, I mean that the purpose of Bitcoin and the way in which blockchain was used for Bitcoin is such that every ledger of every transaction would be hosted on every Bitcoin owner's machine. So everybody who had Bitcoin also had every historical record of every transaction, even if it wasn't made by them. Now, obviously this doesn't scale. Consumer electronics hardware has not arisen to the point of being able to support Bitcoin for everybody. And Bitcoin's rise in popularity was actually outpacing consumer electronics. The important thing about having a fully distributed system is if everybody has every ledger of every transaction that has ever been made with this currency, then you can't just come in here with a fake ledger and say, hey, I have all the Bitcoin because look at all these transactions because there's a voting process and anybody with a false ledger will be voted out in the blockchain. And there can also be branches as well. But this branching thing has only come up recently and it's come up recently because like I said before, that doesn't scale. We'll get into that, but in the early days, the voting had to be unanimous more or less for a transaction to go through. So everybody had every purchase record of everybody who used this currency, and that is extremely secure. Having it distributed like that is extremely secure. But now when it doesn't scale, you're going to need to make it semi-distributed. So what that means is you introduce this concept of miners and miners are machines that can be owned by a company, owned by a person that mine Bitcoin. And in order to mine Bitcoin, it's described as solving puzzles, which sounds, honestly, it sounds kind of dumb. Really what they do is they compete with each other to add to the blockchain. So they'll get batches of transactions and try to validate them. And that is what Bitcoin miners do today. A drawback of this is it's extremely inefficient when it comes to energy. It's bad for the environment. So companies have started to pop up that are energy companies whose actual purpose is to mine Bitcoin or, or other crypto. So that's fun. We're going from, you know, early days, hey, this cryptocurrency that only a few people have and is completely distributed to like, oh, companies are now controlling what ends up in the final blockchain. Companies and wealthy individuals. Now there's something called a 51% attack, which is essentially if you have a couple billion dollars, which many people in the world do, you can fake ledgers and make it look like you own all these transactions and essentially rob something like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Actually, a few years back, Ethereum was robbed in such a way. But with the rise in height of cryptocurrency comes the rise in shady companies who want to mine it to profit. And with the lack of legislation when it comes to this kind of currency comes a lot of shady stuff. So I mentioned the 51% attack, since now we've lost our fully distributed Bitcoin. And there was also a recent hack on 
a particular Ethereum wallet. Wallets are used to keep your identity protected. The second thing that was so attractive about cryptocurrency, keeping your identity safe. So with a wallet, it would create and manage different addresses for your currency to be sent to so it couldn't be traced. So for all of your illegal activities, you could keep track of those in your wallet, whichever wallet software you used. With the centralization of crypto though, because it's not scalable, and by centralization, so something that's completely decentralized would be something that is completely distributed. So initially, Bitcoin at the start of it was completely decentralized. There was no central management machine that kept track of things. It was all in the hands of the consumer. It was more like a democracy, let's say like a completely democratic system where there was voting in place and everybody had a copy of the ledgers. But now it's been decentralized. There's also all of this wallet software. You don't know where it comes from. And with government pushes to track this money, the anonymity is being revoked on pretty much all of these cryptocurrencies. So what made crypto attractive in the beginning is completely gone. It's semi-centralized now because only the people who can afford to keep miners running, um, which takes a lot of computational power, it takes a lot of energy, it's bad for the environment, but like, it's not like anybody cares about that. And it is traceable now, even if you think it's not. So everything that was attractive about cryptocurrency to begin with is gone. And it's probably not coming back. Actually, it might. So this has been decades worth of research in the making to get it to this point, and it is at a suboptimal point. It will probably take one to four decades to get it to a place where it is actually viable as a currency. So what is up with all of these new cryptocurrencies popping up? We got Titcoin, we got Shitcoin, we got Asscoin, we got Grandma's Fart coin. I don't know, dude. Every kind of coin imaginable. It's closely related with pump and dump scams. Let's take a guess as to why. Well, like I mentioned, decades worth of research on Bitcoin and Ethereum, and nobody knows what goes on behind the scenes in these new cryptocurrencies. So Ethereum and Bitcoin can be distinguished not only by the number of people who buy in and how much they buy into it, but also the underlying algorithms and computer science principles that they're built upon. These new cryptos that are popping up, what are they built upon? Have they published any papers? I mean, really? <laughs> are they built on the backbone of Bitcoin? Is there a blockchain paper that they have done something new to completely decentralize and keep your transactions private? Because no, you know what they say? They say it's going to the moon and you should invest. Huh. In my mind, that reduces it to some trendy stock to invest in where the company does nothing. Literally, literally nothing. Because are the people who invest in these cryptocurrencies going to spend them on something? No, they're likely not going to. They're likely going to instead just put their money in because they want it to grow, because they see a trend. But you're investing without having done any research and um, you're investing in likely nothing. What is the technology behind this? I don't know. Why don't you freaking tell me? I would invest if I knew, but I doubt there's much behind it because like I said, decades worth of research, some of it's published, a lot of it is proprietary. So if you're going to invest in cryptocurrency, invest in the older ones, invest in the vetted ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum, but should you actually invest in those? I'm a little, I'm a little torn on saying whether or not you should, to be honest. I do think it's possible that consumer electronics will catch up to the point where it's viable as a currency, but I think that'll take a really long time, and I think there's a huge bubble right now that's 
probably going to burst once people stop seeing returns and realize that uh, federal governments are tracking their transactions. It's not untraceable anymore. Don't be stupid. So honestly, if I were to give any investment advice, I'm not a finance person, so like, don't listen to me. But for me personally, I would wait until the bubble bursts by then because I can see it becoming viable long term in the next 10 to 40 years. If you don't want to wait that long though, maybe invest in the stock market. Invest in companies that are doing real things to make money and not in something that has a cool sounding name, cryptocurrency, oh yeah, the math, the cryptography, oh my gosh, Sherlock Holmes. Don't. It's dumb. If you want me to get into more of the details on that, then like and subscribe and I mean comment and tell me that you want me to. But also check out my other content because uh, it's iffy. <laughs> I make content based on my mood. What? I engineer all day. I'm multifaceted. I have other interests. Come on. It's not just one thing. And I encourage you to branch out as well. Jeez, stop watching all these weird tech videos. Shit, man. Maybe go outside. Chill. Grumpo out.